in this lecture we are going to learn about uh, STL okay so that is standard template library here you will learn about vectors so first before going that we will learn a little bit about what are STL in C++ so STL stands for the standard template library which means that your C++ provides you libraries for representing different data structures and these data structures are generic so what does it mean so uh, similar to your templates so when you define let's say a linked list a list or a vector or an array okay so you can have these data structures use templates which mean you can have a list of integers a queue of integers, a queue of string objects, a queue of characters, queue of doubles, anything. Okay, so this way it helps you that you don't have to write your own data structures implementation, and they are generic in the sense that these data structures, like for list, it can hold your ints, doubles, etc. Okay, so this is the benefit, and now here we will see our first standard template library that represents a vector okay so vector is a kind of a dynamic array okay where you can have access the elements uh, uh, directly okay using index so vector if we have so it's similar to array but it's dynamic in the sense that you can you don't need to define the length of that array if you have increased the size it will increase automatically and it is dynamics the size is dynamic so what are good things about a vector the thing is that you can access is very efficient okay so in vectors access is very efficient I can access the sixth element tenth element or 99th element any one just by having the index I okay so vector if we have vec dot at i i can access directly or even in fact vector i that element ith element i can access so this is good about vector what is not good ab about vector is that if you do insertion at the end or in the beginning it is fine but if you do insert in the middle somewhere okay or at some random place and even if you delete at some random place it will become very costly affair okay because you have to shift so for example if this is the array I have one two three five seven now if you ask me to insert a four between three and five so this is an array and these memory locations are contiguous so what we need to do is we need to shift everything after 3 so 1 and 2 will remain there but 3 will come here 5 will come here 7 will come into a new place and then only okay in fact 3 will be here so 3 will not be shifted 5 and 7 will be shifted and an empty space is created here where you insert a 4 so this will basically have a O of n where n is your size of integer time complexity in the worst case and similarly for delete if you delete somewhere here then you have to do a left shift so this is the case and now what we want is that we want to look at how we implement a vector so let's see the code so again you need to include hash include vector okay so this is the class name if you include this one and using namespace standard so that you don't need to write always standard so we define a vector so in fact I have in fact done this one standard vector you can take so this standard vector we means I'm taking this class from standard namespace standard vector then you have because this is a generic template class you have to tell that okay I'm having a vector of int type and then I will give my name my vector so this is done then what happens you have a lot of API's for this they provide okay so this is the data structure and for data structures you know they provide a lot of API so 
first one is my vector dot empty has it got any element in it so if i check my vector is it empty so just use the function my vector dot empty it will tell you it will return true if it is empty and it will return false if it is not empty now to insert what happens i just do push back so push back is a function that will push an element and the back of your array okay so back of the array push back i is one so one is pushed here then push back again two and then three then four and then five so five things are inserted because we are doing push back so five will be at the end one will be at the beginning because one was inserted first now if you check uh, next function is so my uh, vector dot size so size what it helps in now we have five elements so my vector dot size so this will return you the size of the vector so now five elements are here it will return us five again we want to push back a few things so we push back six to ten so six seven eight nine and ten are inserted in our vector so this is done so push back now you know api some of the basic apis push back okay then you can also do push underscore front so it means you can push something in the front so if i do something like here after this one if i do my vector dot push underscore front and then 11 so it will be inserted now here okay and then it push back my vector dot push underscore front 12 so 12 will come here so something like this will happen so these apis are provided to help you concentrate on your logic rather than just write your own apis check for their bugs and so on okay so again now after that we can check what is our vector is it empty of course it will not be empty now then a few more important things i need to iterate through the vector isn't it like an array i need to iterate through the vector that okay i want to access the first element second element like that till the end then the i you are provided with iterator okay I, iterator so here is this iterator how you write iterator so we will have standard vector so this is the thing data structure or the standard template for which we want the iterator standard vector int i want an iterator for this one so i will write iterator so iterator will be given for this this is how we write and this is equal to my vector dot begin so what will happen now you will get an iterator for your beginning of that array okay so let's say it was just one to five three four and five so you will get an iterator which is pointing out here so this is the case and why what are the things we need to define for your iterator we need to tell it that it is an iterator of type vector then again in vector also it is of type int so that when it is iterating it knows how many memory location it has to escape to go to the next one if it is integer it might be four bytes if it is a double it might be eight bytes so that iterator will shift or jump by eight bytes okay so this is i give you the size to the iterator and then i point it to the beginning of that vector then what i do iterator i will tell it that till it is not equal to the vector my vector dot end so here again you can see these are the pointers that are given for the vector my vector dot begin it will give you the beginning of the vector my vector dot end it will give you the end of the vector then iterator plus plus so this is kind of i plus plus you do for a for loop so iterator if you do it plus plus or plus plus it that iterator will move to the next element iterator plus 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 iterator again it will move to the next element and then what you do if you do star it it will print the value inside that the memory location it's pointing to so this is the iterator it's very important how we iterate next what happens so this is for printing let's see next is i is 
another way of doing that for a vector is that I do vector at position i. So I just write my vector dot at it provides the API at i. So this will print whatever was there at your position i. Another way of writing. Then we need in a data structure we might want to remove some items. So you are given one API that is erase. So my vector dot erase again you need to give at what position I want to erase which element I want to erase so the thing how it is provided so I will give it the position so it will be my vector dot erase so where the sixth element my vector dot begin plus five zero is the first element one two three and fifth is the basically plus five will take me to the sixth element so let's say 6 was there, this was 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this will take us to the 6th element, it will erase it. Now if I want to erase, let's say 3 contiguous elements, so I can also give like my vector dot erase. And then I can give the pointers, okay, so from where to where, which, what is the range I want to. So here I'm giving my vector dot begin till my vector dot begin plus 3. So what happens, it will erase elements, three elements that are between these two elements, my vector dot begin here till my vector plus three. So zero to three, it will go here and it will erase the three elements. Okay, so this is there and now we see some other things. We just print the vector out here. Another way to delete all the elements is just to do my vector dot clear erase all the elements okay so now we just check is the vector empty and it should say yes so now let's try to run this one first build this and this is fine and let's run it and see if the code is working as we have said so let's see Initially, I just defined the vector, haven't inserted anything, my vector is empty. I just checked with the API empty. It is empty, it's working fine. Then I inserted five elements in this for loop and it is telling that size of my vector after that I printed out, it's saying it's five. Again, I did five more elements I inserted and then size of the vector has become 10. And now if I check my vector is empty, so I am putting a not there, so it's not empty. I'm iterating through the vector from beginning to end and printing the values using star it. My vector contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 till 10. Next way using at if I want to print. So that is also working fine at position 0 is 1, at position 1 is 2, at position 9 is 10. Then what I do erase at the my beginning plus five. So it is erased. So which one will go? So it is making it go to the sixth element, which is six. Six is erased. Then the first three elements should be raised. So one, two and three. And then we print the vector. So one, two, three are deleted. Four, five is there. Sixth element is deleted. Okay, so this happens. And finally, we clear everything. So my vector is now empty. So this is about the STL vector. So the thing is vectors and STL in general. So they are, they provide us with many data structures and they are generic. So we can use and they provide a lot of APIs so that we can use those data structures in our program for making application instead of just trying to make so many classes again okay so i hope you understand this thanks a lot